Good afternoon and welcome to Mr. Micklebarrow's Maths World. Uh, maths World, this is the way it is. More integral equations, base E. Okay, so very simple ones like this. Well, the go here is that what we're going to do is take logs of both sides. I'm going to use the natural logarithm. So when we do that, um, we simply proceed each term with uh, the uh, natural logarithm. So now the thing is this. We can bring uh, the x out front, making use of that uh, log law, and we get that. Now the thing is, the natural logarithm of e, if you remember, the log base a, a is equal to 1, always. So this is equal to 1. ln e is equal to 1. So we can conclude from that that x is equal to ln6. Now if we need uh, a numeric approximation of that, we simply press the natural log key. Remember your textbook's going to call it log base e, I call it ln. So ln6 is equal to 1.79 um, x equals 1.79. Let's make it to three decimal places. Two and just note 3dp in brackets there. Okay, what about this one? Well, here, once again, our friend the null factor theorem comes into play, doesn't it? Okay, it's a binomial product, really. So that times that equals zero. That means either that's equal to zero or that's equal to zero. And so our first line, we just write that down. We say, therefore, e to the negative x minus 2 equals zero or uh, e to the 2x minus 3 equals 0. And we solve for x. Therefore, e to the negative x equals plus 2. Or e to the uh, 2x equals positive 3. And once again, we'll take logs of both sides. So we'll have ln, therefore ln. Uh, e to the negative x equals ln2 or ln uh, e to the 2x equals 3. So here, what do we have? We have therefore negative x taking that out front and ln e, as we've seen before, is equal to 1, so I don't propose writing that down again, equals uh, ln2. Therefore, uh, multiplying through by negative 1, we get x equal to negative ln2. Sometimes we're quite happy to leave it in that form. That's what we would call exact form, and I might do that on this occasion. But uh, I see someone else has calculated it for me. It's equal to? 0.693. Negative 0.693. Decimal basis. Thank you. And now, similar logic here 2x out front, ln e, we've seen before, is equal to 1, so let's ignore that, equals ln3. Oops, ln3, like so. Therefore, x equals ln3 over 2. Um, and if you want a numeric approximation, to repeat the point, sometimes we don't work. Happy for it to be in uh, exact form, uh, that would come to 0 0.549. 0 0.549. Again, two, three decimal places. Hope your rounding's okay there, um, John. Okay, now let's crank it up a bit in terms of level of difficulty. Uh, no, actually, not just yet. This one. Um, Oh yes, yes, it's a bit hard. Okay, so here, what we might do is multiply through by e to the power of x. Okay? And you'll see what happens. Firstly, what's e to the power of x times e to the power of x? Well, yes. it's e to the power of 2x, isn't it? Yes. Okay? And what's negative 4 e to the power of negative x times e to the power of x? Well, that's just equal to minus 4 e to the power of 0, isn't it? 
Okay, so that's equal to one, that's equal to four. So that's what we end up with there. E to the power of zero, well anything to the power of zero is one, so that's just minus four, isn't it? So what I'm going to do in the next line is just add four to both sides. E to the power of two x equals four. And in the next line, you know the drill now, we can take the natural log of both sides, ln e to the 2x equals ln, the natural logarithm of 4. So therefore, 2x, ln e of course is equal to 1, equals uh, that. And therefore, x is equal to um, ln 4 on 2. And uh, in, if we did want a numeric approximation, we would say that is equal to? 0.693. 0.693. Okay, let's have a look at this one. It looks more complicated. It's got three terms. That's an E there. Looks a bit messy, but it's 6E to the power of negative X. Are we going to use the same technique? I think possibly uh, we should uh, certainly try that. And that is to multiply through by E to the power of X. Let's see what happens. So I'll just make a note here. Times each term so that um, you can see where everything's coming from, by e to the power of x, okay? So just put an e to the power of x there, what have you got? You've got 4e to the power of 2x, same base, you're going to add your indices. Therefore, 4e to the 2x, what do we get here? Again, it's similar to what happened over there. e to the power of negative x times e to the power of x, which is just e to the power of 0, isn't it? So that's plus 6. And here we get minus, minus 11 e to the x. And all that's equaling 0. So what am I going to do now? Well, we're going to use a trick we've used before. And it's called um, um, substitution. And the technique of substitution we are going to use. And what we're going to do is let e to the uh, a some prime numeral, we're going to use A, A equal E to the X. And what do we get then? Well, firstly, we're going to record that's the fact that that's what we're doing. Let A equal E to the X. And we've simply got to replace A, uh, sorry, E to the X with that. Now, this is the complicated bit. That's equal to 4A squared. I hope you can see that. Because A squared, squaring that side, you get E to the 2X, don't you? So really, it's 4A squared. Um, I'm going to come back to that one because we don't do anything to it anyway. Minus 11a and then plus 6 equals 0. And now we have a quadratic equation to solve. We're going to solve that for a and then we're going to replace a with e to the x because that's what a is equal to. So the product, some number ritual goes like this. The product is all. It's not a monic quadratic trinomial. That makes it more complicated. But anyway, 4 times 6 is 24. I'm going to put that in because it's possibly a time since you've done one of these. 4 times 6 is 24. The sum is negative 11. So the sum is always the coefficient of the middle term. And we're after two numbers that when times, well the product, uh, is 24 and whose sum is 11. I'm thinking 8 and 3 has got something to do with it. So it's positive 24, that means our numbers are either both positive or both negative. The sum's telling us they must both be negative. So I'm thinking of minus 8, minus 3. Quick check, that times that does equal that, that plus that does equal that, so we're okay. Now, when it's a non-monic, when the coefficient of a squared is not 1, remember you're using these numbers to break down the middle term. Then you factorise in pairs and you're nearly done. So what we've got here, guys, is this. 4a squared minus 8a minus 3a plus 6 equals 0. We factorise in pairs. We always pair them up. And remember this comforting fact. It doesn't matter which order you put those in. It works out either way. So factorising 4a squared minus 8a, we're going to get 4a is the common factor, highest common factor. And what do we times that by to get back to that? A. Mm -hmm. What do we times that by to get back to that? Minus 2. Minus 2. Okay, so now what we've got here is 3 
uh, sorry, minus, common factor 3, open up bracket, what do we times that by to get back to that? A, what do we times that by to get back to that? Careful with signs. It's negative, because negative 3 times negative 2 is positive 6. And there we go. Notice that uh, when you're using this technique, what's in brackets will always be the same if it's not, you've mucked up a bit. Okay, this means that um, A minus 2 is a common factor for that side of the minus sign and that side as well. So A minus 2, bracket, 4A minus 3 equals 0. Therefore, A equals 2, or 4A equals 3, therefore A will equal 3 quarters. Now, unfortunately, no one wanted to know what A was, so we've got to tell the dear reader that A is equal to e to the power of x. So, 2 and remember 3 quarters. So, uh, 2 and 3 quarters equals e to the x, doesn't it? And so does that. Okay, now we know what to do. We take the, uh, the natural logarithm of both sides. So, uh, ln2 equals ln e to the x. We know what that's going to come to. Let's leave it in the exact form this time. That's equal to, well, we're going to bring the x down. Therefore, x will equal ln2. Sometimes we really do like it in exact form. So we'll leave it like that rather than get a numeric evaluation. So, and we do the same here. ln 3 quarters equals uh, ln e to the x. Therefore, x, bringing that down and noting that that's equal to 1, equals ln uh, 3 on 4. Now you could, if you wish, express this differently. You could say, therefore, x equals ln 3 minus ln 4, making use of a fairly basic logarithm. Thank you, that's all we have time for today.